from soaring over this beautiful coast to experiencing priceless art. These videos you're looking at right now have one major thing in common. They're not real. They were made with artificial intelligence. Yeah, hard to tell. It's beautiful that we're looking at this, but none of it is real. Like you said, Shana, this technology has been around for a couple of years, and it's so realistic that it really is hard to tell what's real from what's fake. These videos come from Sora, OpenAI's video generator, and you can create realistic videos just from telling the software what you want it to make once it's open to the public. So joining us now in studio is David Derajotis. He's a technology expert who currently works as the chief insurance officer for Embroker. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. So we've been talking about this. The last time we had you here, we were talking about photos. Now we've moved on to videos, and they are so realistic. We're living in a time where technology is advancing at a pace and a rate unlike any other time before. And I don't say that lightly. Yeah. What we're seeing here is going from horse and buggy to a Tesla. That, those are the types of advancements that we're seeing with these models and the content that they're able to produce. Which that metaphor is a little terrifying. If you think about the people that were rolling around in the horse and buggy, if you handed them a Tesla, yeah. <laughs> things could go wrong. So are we already at the point where we really can't trust our own eyes. Well, it's tough. I think you're exactly right. I think we now are at a point where it is gonna be very difficult to look at an image or look at a video and say, you know what? That's not quite right, that's fake. It, we're, we're long past those days. And, and just remember, the way that it's being produced now will be the worst that will, it will ever be. It's only gonna get better from here on out. Yeah, and just wanna point out, every piece of video that you're seeing here to the right is not real. These aren't real people, these aren't real animals. And we know that right now they are keeping this from the public so they can make sure it doesn't produce harmful or inappropriate content. How dangerous could this be if people are able to bypass that, even if they put those safeguards in place? Well, it, it is dangerous. I think right now you look around at the different regulations and laws that are being passed. It's very, very patchy in terms of the regulation and laws that are being passed at the state level. There are a handful of states that have pa passed laws that have to do with the creation of AI, uh, deep fakes, images, things of that nature that are non-consensual, and a lot of them are pornographic in nature. So that's a real problem there. But we, we can't really rely and wait on the regulation and the laws to catch up. We have to do things to be able to protect ourselves. We have to be discerning first and foremost. And we have to question everything that you see. And how much can we really rely, even when that does happen, on just regulations? We've seen recent issues with, um, with Taylor Swift with the president, um, audio, I believe that was New Hampshire, where yes. a lot of people got calls appearing to come from the president telling them not to vote. I mean, we're in an election year. How, how should we be thinking about this going forward? Regulation is always slow to catch up. And you look at the Biden robocalls that did take place in New Hampshire, as you mentioned, the FCC did pass regulation pretty quickly but they added it to a more than 30 year old law regulation around telephone consumer protection, like robocalls and telemarketing calls. So they did something there to really help, but, but we can't simply rely on that. I think what we can do is you have to slow down. You have to just bring everything to a halt. Take a look at the images that you're reviewing. What's the nature what, of, of the content? What are they trying to get you to do? What type of emotion are they pulling on? We have to really pause and be discerning with what we're looking at. There are certainly things that companies can do. If you look at the big social media companies, they can look to install uh, algorithms that will detect some type of deep fake uh, that's been uploaded. You can take a look at the creators of the content, have watermarks in there. But again, there are easy ways to bypass that. It's really gonna be on us to have a discerning eye. If you've been watching with us, we've been having this conversation with David from the beginning, and each time you come, there is a huge advancement that we see. I know before we were talking about looking at the hands in those photos to maybe tell, that's gotten better. Even with these videos, the hands look fine to me. They look like people. So is this kind of a, a spot that we're getting in where you have to question just about everything you see in here? I really think so. I mean, you look at some of this content, how easy it would be to sway or manipulate people. Imagine seeing shots of a war that's going on in a country that's really not happening, or seeing protests in a state or a neighboring city that isn't going on at all. These images are so realistic and it comes down to the way that you prompt it. If you're just very descriptive in the way that you're describing the video, the images, the scene that you want, it produces just beautiful imagery. And that's what we now see with Sora and OpenAI. Which begs the question, I think you touched on it already. We know that with ChatGPT, this is trained on the internet. It's trained on information that's been out there. So are they images, videos, a specific set of images? Where are they getting all of this? Large language models are vacuums for data. They crave it, they need it, and the more that they get, the better that they'll perform. You have to think of all the different terms and services, agreements that, that we accept when we use a, a particular app, or we go onto a website when we put content on social media, all of that information can be scraped, it can be cataloged and collected, 
and use to train these large language models, these, these different uh, tools that are developing this type of content. So I can assure you there's all sorts of content that we've all put out there on social media. When we accept terms and conditions, when we use different apps, that data is vacuumed up, it's packaged, and it's sent off to companies that are using it for their benefit. So basically what you're saying is when we jump on a lot of those trends, we're just feeding this database. Absolutely. It's a conveyor belt that just keeps rolling off fresh, updated information. Every time you post a picture of your family, every time you post that you're, you're visiting a location, all of that is collected. Every time a new video is posted on YouTube or a news broadcast is going out, that's all publicly available information. And AI models need that to continue to refine and to get better. So on that note, considering that we don't know where all of this is heading as it's developing so fast, you know, if you're in the public eye, your image, it's out there. You can't really put that toothpaste back in the tube. But you see a lot of people struggling with whether to put their family, to put their young children online when they're not necessarily consenting to it. Some people will put the emojis over their kid's face, something like that. Is this something that should give people pause about that very thing? When you're putting your children's images online, might they end up in a video, a fake image someday? Absolutely. I think we all need to just take a step back. And, and me, first and foremost, I understand you want to be able to post pictures of your children, of your family, of different milestones, things that you're very proud of. But you have to think, what could be the long-term implications of this? What type of ongoing timeline are you providing the first day of school, going off to college, first day at work, participating in this particular sport? You're providing updated information on a regular basis. So I think you have to balance the urge of being proud and happy and excited to share information with tampering it back and having a more private mindset. I'm watching the video as you're talking, David, and it, each one that comes up, it's like I don't even believe that it's not real because there's so much detail in it. How much is this changing our society as we knew it? Because we lived in a day before where if a video surfaced or photos or audio, it could be scandalous, that especially going into a that political season. Yeah. End it's, of story. It's yeah. changing everything. I think we have to remember this is the worst that the content will ever be. It is only going to get better from here, which is why I think that we definitely have to have a discerning eye. Again, what, what account is posting that particular video? What's the motive behind it? What are they trying to get us to do? Can we verify it with other sources? Because absolutely, you see it once and it spreads like wildfire and it's very difficult to pull back from that. So we have to be very careful. We have to just slow things down, verify, double check, and then that will be the best. With this woman that we see right here now, would you be able to tell off the bat that that's AI? You have to look very closely. Now with this particular video, there are a couple of giveaways. You can see the logo on her glasses on the side there briefly. There's another scene where she turns her head and it doesn't show up. So there's a little discrepancy there. There's also another point in the video where her legs left and right kind of switch from one to the other. So there are very small things, but again, those will absolutely be corrected. And I mean, can we really trust ourselves, the wider public, to be that eagle-eyed? I mean, people are fooled by much less convincing images. Now, I, I completely agree. And again, the rate that we consume data, the rate that we consume information on social media, it's going faster and faster. We live in a scrolling society where you go from one video to the next. Slowing down, pausing, and verifying will be more important now than ever before. And if not, we just move into the woods. I, That's right. I'm actually already thinking, where do I find a cabin? You guys can have this. Yeah, I'm just done. forget it. Low tech for me. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's a terrifying but fascinating yeah, really as well. Is. David, thank you so much. Thank you.